Okay, so hello friends. Today I will be talking about my experience with the Moto X Play, which I have been using it for the past one year. And do take a note that this variant does not come with a turbo charger. So without wasting any time, let's begin. So let's talk about the pros. The first pro is its display. It has a 5.5 inches full HD display, that is a 1080p screen, which gives a pixel density of about 403. And I must say that the screen quality is actually very good. The screen is very bright and vibrant. As you all can see, the viewing angles are also pretty good. So it was not an issue while you are in direct sunlight and use your phone. It also has an auto brightness sensor which works fine. It has scoring in a glass 3 and it supports multi-touch up to 10 fingers. The second pro is the build quality. The weight distribution is pretty well done. The weight of this device is 169 grams but due to its curved back it is very comfortable to hold. And also the rubberized back gives it a good grip. There is slight texture on the power button which gives it a good tactile feel. Okay, so the third pro is that the output via the audio jack is also very good. Tried with some of the basic headphones and the output was really sharp and crisp. It is the complete stock Android experience. Currently it runs Android Marshmallow as you can see but soon it will be updated to Android Nougat in late November or early December. Moto India told that they won't be giving the timeline but are working hard to roll out the update soon. One is that it is a proper dual SIM device with dedicated micro SD card slot, so no hybrid solution. Both the SIM slots support 4G, so you can insert your 4G SIM on both the slots to use your 4G network. Also, it supports OTG as it runs Android Marshmallow. You can also use your micro SD card up to 128 gigs as internal memory. Therefore, storage should not be an issue. Next is that it has a nano coating which makes it splash and dust resistant. It is not fully water resistant, so not the rain, but it can bear some of the light splashes. That it supports both the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz Wi Fi band. It comes with less bloatware and has some of the basic sensors like the auto brightness, compass, proximity, accelerometer, etc. So, talking about the camera, it has a 21 megapixel rear facing camera with face detection autofocus. Has a dynamic CCT dual tone LED flash. It also supports geo tagging, slow motion video, night mode, tap to focus, face detection, panorama, and auto HDR. It also has the barcode scanner. Talking about the front camera, it is a 5 megapixel camera. Talking about the video recording, it can record up to 1080p videos at 30 fps from both the front and the rear camera. Footage from the front facing camera of the Moto X Play. So, this should give you an idea about the internal microphone and the quality of the video. Apart from the rear facing camera of the Moto X Play, this is the leg as you can see and this is the metro work which is going on. And the focusing time is a bit slow as you all can see, but the quality is good I suppose. Okay, so as you can see from the samples, these pictures were taken in direct sunlight and as you all can see that the pictures come out to be really beautiful. These all were taken in manual focus, so if you keep your hands straight and stay focused then pictures come out to be really very good. As you all can see the sharpness and the color accuracy is also pretty good. This picture was taken while traveling, so as you can see, while traveling also the focusing is pretty good. These pictures were taken in completely indoor lighting and as you can see the pictures are pretty good in these conditions too. Just one thing is that you will have to stay focused then only the pictures come out to be good. This was taken from the front camera of the Moto X Play. Okay so the next is that it supports NFC, FM radio and Qualcomm quick charge too. Talking about the charging time, it took about 2 hours 10 minutes to completely charge from 5% to 100% as you can see from the screenshots above. It gave me a screen on time of about 3 hours 45 minutes when I was completely on mobile data. But on Wi-Fi I guess it can give a screen on time of about 4 to 4.5 four hours and could last for a full working day. Flight though is not a quick charger but can simultaneously charge two devices and it has two USB ports. So it is really helpful. The call quality was very good, no interruptions or muddy calls faced. It also has that motor gestures like 
twist phone to switch on the camera, lift your phone for the Moto display and also the Moto voice command which is exclusive only for the Moto X series. Some of the pros which I wanted to share with y'all now let's talk about the cons or the things which I did not like and are serious. So let's start. Con is the output by the speaker. It just has a speaker at the bottom which is a mono speaker and this one is the earpiece. The output by the speaker was not, not that loud. The output was just decent. You will be able to hear your ringtone if you are in another room but will be disappointed while gaming, listening to music and watching videos. One good thing is that the speaker is in the front side of the phone unlike other phones which have a speaker near the charging port over here. So this is one of the pro that you will be able to play some games and while watching videos you won't block the speaker so you will get a decent output. Con is that it just has 2GB of RAM. Till now I haven't experienced any lag. On my power usage I hardly get 12% of the RAM free. On daily usage it works fine but I think after the Android N update the device could lag. Also as the apps would update it would require more RAM for better performance. So I think 2GB RAM would not be able to take part in the long run. My fourth point is that since it has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 processor, it tends to heat up on extended gaming to a temperature of max 42 degrees. It does not go above 42 but it stays at 42. Since I am a power user, it tends to heat up at extended usage like continuous web browsing, listening to music, watching videos, etc. But on normal day-to-day -day purposes, I have no complaint. Point is that on playing heavy games like Nova 3, I experienced a bit lag, little bit of frame drops, but Asphalt 8, Modern Combat, and some other heavy games ran smoothly on high settings. The next is that it does not support 4K recording. Also, it does not have any gyroscope sensor, so no VR. The main thing is that uh, it is not a complete water resistant device. At that time when this phone was launched, Moto G3 and the Moto G Turbo Edition was also launched which was cheaper than Moto X Play and was IP67 water resistant certified. So I don't understand why Motorola has done this but it is not completely resistant um, but is splash proof. This point which I am speaking about is one of the most important point among the all and this one is about the SAR value. For those who don't know the SAR value is also known as the specific absorption rate. It is the measure of the rate that body tissues absorb radiation energy during cell phone use. So at the head the SAR value is about 0.8 watts per kg and at the body is about 1.23 watts per kg. According to the Indian SAR guideline the maximum limit of the SAR value should not exceed 1.6 watts per kg. So I would say that the SAR value of this Moto X Play is slightly on the higher side. So you will have to be aware of that. The absence of the LED notification light. It has that Moto display which is not that helpful. The notification light would have been better. The one is that the security patch is not yet updated. It is still stuck on the May security patch. I hope that the Android Nougat will update the security patch to the latest version. The one I have faced is the animation transition speed. Um, by default it is a bit slow so you might find your phone to be slow. You can easily fix it by going to the settings. Under the developer options just go down. And here in the transition animation scale just it will be to animation scale 1x by default. Just reduce it to 0.5x and then go back and you will find that the lag is gone. That's all for today. I hope that you have liked my video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Uh, do let me know about your experience with the Moto X Play and I hope that I have helped you in um, thinking that whether you should go for this Moto X Play or not. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.